Welcome back. So how important is it to you for our area to have a Major League Baseball team? And will you still go to the Rays games if they are played in Ybor City? The Suncoast and the Tampa Bay area have the greatest concentration of teams for spring training than any place else in Florida, and attendance is just great. But the Rays are the only team that calls the region home during the season, and attendance is, well, the worst in baseball. Year after year, we don't know exactly yet how much a new raised ballpark will cost and how much will be passed along to taxpayers. But at some point, we will have to decide if we want Major League Baseball in our area or if we can live without it. And joining us for more is John O'Donohue, who knows all about the region losing their baseball team. He played for the Montreal Expos. State Senator Greg Stubbe and joining us by Skype is Rock Riley of Sports Talk Florida, who has covered the Rays since day one. And Rock, I'm going to start with you because I understand Hillsborough County Commissioners had a meeting today on this very issue. What happened? Yeah, they said that they were caught off guard with the announcement that they really weren't told about this site. It's not so much a Hillsborough County approved site. It's one of their commissioners, Ken Hagen. He's been the point man on this. He traveled to Minnesota. He traveled to Atlanta. He came back. He told the Rays, I think the ballpark that you want is what they're doing in Atlanta and what they've done around it. But that being said, Hillsborough County says, Man, there's so much to to still figure out. How are we going to pay for this? This is, and I will tell you this, I've talked to uh, County Commissioner Ken Hagen, the point man for this. This is the site that the Tampa Bay Rays want. It's near Channel Side. It's near Amelie Arena where the Lightning play and they have a lot of concerts. And also it's close to the Ybor City Entertainment District. This is the site that the Rays want. But there's also a St. Pete Mayor's race coming up November 7th. You got to wait to see how that's going to play out. That's why the Rays haven't made any official statement regarding this site in Hillsborough County. Uh, Senator, the, the problem is that uh, Florida residents have kind of gotten, um, you know, a little bit tired of, of flipping the bill for these stadiums. We're, we're talking about Raymond J Stadium in, in Tampa, uh, where the Marlins play in Miami. There have been some uh, movement in the state legislature, which is you know, basically saying uh, we're not going to flip the majority of the bill for these these stadiums. Well, and the challenge has been, and, and I have a study that was done by our Office of Economic and Demographic Research, and the challenge from a lawmaker's perspective is if you look at the return on investment on these programs, for example, over the three years preceding 2015 for the professional sports franchise incentive, we, the taxpayers, invested $48 million, and the state net state revenues return was 14.2 for a return on investment of 0.3. So every million dollar we invested, we only got $300,000 back. So from a political standpoint and from a legislative standpoint, it's do you want to make that investment when your return on that investment is not going to be positive? John, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, every year, uh, hordes of people go to these spring training games here in Sarasota and around our region. Why do you think we do so well in terms of attendance uh, and going to these games during the spring, but not so much during the year? Well, the snowbirds have a lot to do with it. You know, they come down from Baltimore, and, and uh, I know a little bit about what they did in Baltimore. They, they really promoted Baltimore, the Orioles did, in Baltimore to get people to come down here for spring training. And it, it's made a big difference. It really has, because they've been, I think, sold out just about every year, and their attendance is growing every year. So, I mean, you know, we love baseball down here in Florida. Our kids play it 12 months a year. I certainly know my, mine did. But do we think differently about Major League Baseball and, and the interest in going to these games? You know, I, I think so. I think we do think a little bit different about it. You know, the, the stadium that's up in, in Tampa, in uh, St. Petersburg right now, uh, from, a, from a viewpoint of a, of a fan going in, it's a, it's a wonderful place to watch a ball game. Um, it's cool. It's, it's covered. You know, um, it's not the best major league stadium there is, but still people, people really enjoy watching baseball and they, they love it here in Florida. They all, they all watch somebody. And uh, I think uh, uh, that, that a big problem that I saw was from other ballparks that are around the country, there's no corporate people. There's not enough corporate sponsorship right. here. I want to get into that more. We are only at the bottom of the first, so we are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more on the new ballpark for the Rays right after we check the first alert weather. Stay with us. 
Welcome back. We're talking about whether taxpayers will have to help keep the race here or if we leave, let them leave the region. And joining us for more is John O'Donohue, who knows all about a region losing their baseball team. He played for the Montreal Expos. State Senator Greg Stubbe and joining us by Skype is Rock Riley of Sports Talk Florida, who has covered the race since day one. And Rock, let us be clear, what happens if either Tampa or St. Pete fail to come up with the right place and the right package to build the raise a new stadium? Alan, that's a great question because up until this point, there has been no other city or market that has come forth saying, you know what, we'll build you a stadium. I think the days of public support heavy with taxes are done. And no one has come forth. There's been talk, oh, maybe San Antonio. Now, Las Vegas is something to watch out for. They've got an NHL team right now. The Oakland Raiders are going to be moving to Las Vegas. There's always this thing about betting for years, but you can bet anywhere. But I think until another city steps forth and says, we got money, we will build you a stadium, then you have to worry. Right now, not so much. But this thing, Alan, has dragged on for at least a decade. And still, as we sit here right now, how do you pay for this thing? It's a long way to go. Well, Major League Baseball keeps saying that it's losing patience. And there has been some discussion I have heard about, you know, obviously Montreal uh, lost a team and, and there is still a fan base there. I have even heard about the Rays possibly moving to whether it's Connecticut or another place in New York. Um, you know, Greg, what do you what does the state do? What do lawmakers do if another city or state comes along and says, we're going to help you, you know, a, a long way towards building a new stadium? The challenge is, is a lot of these projects, like we're talked about, are cities and counties. You know, it's a lot of local governments that have to put up a lot of a lot of the cost. Uh, we just had the Braves and we have a new spring training stadium that, that got put into to play in the county, Sarasota County, through their economic incentive dollars, I think put up about $20 million in cooperation with the Braves and the state doing the $2 million per year through this program that the state has. But if, unless you have a local government willing to make a large investment, then it's going to be challenging for the state to get too very involved. But the state used to get more involved. And, and in fact, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't they help the Dolphins redo that stadium down there and, uh, and but there's been a shift in terms of the the train of thought in Tallahassee yeah and to that point so last week I did a poll out of my out of my legislative office and the question I asked one of the questions I asked was should NFL stadium owners get taxpayer benefits or tax incentives to build stadiums on government property in 2083 people responded and 92.8 percent said no so I think there's kind of been a shift in the thought of people in the state of there's a lot of other needs in our state. Troopers need to be paid more. Teachers need to be paid more. I don't think the state of Florida should be 49th and 50th in mental health funding. So there's a lot of other important needs out there. So when you compare that with putting a sizable amount of, of state resources on something that doesn't have a positive return on investment, I think the voters are starting to see that's not where they want their money. John, you, as we, we kept on saying, that you know firsthand what it's like when the community loses its major league team. Uh, what did baseball mean to those folks who were baseball fans in Montreal, and, and what did it mean when they lost the Expos to Washington? Well, the, the Montreal Expos organization, um, they started out at an old ballpark called Jerry Park, and it was, it was nothing more than a glorified college ballpark. And the people came there, um, it was a social event. They really didn't know all that much about baseball. So they would, that was a social event for them. They would just uh, watch what was going on and when some people clapped, they'd clap. And, 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 but they, they built a ball club there that was very, very good. But when it started to fall apart, they were selling the players. They were selling the players to other ball clubs. They had great young players and they would sell them off. And the people got upset. Is there something about the way a community looks at itself in terms of being a major league uh, franchise, a ma major league community? Some of them do. You know, some of them that, that, that win, um, they're, they pound their chest, you know, and uh, the ones that lose, yeah, we got a ball club. But, you know, it, it, there has to be created somehow more enthusiasm about it. You know, there was a, there was a time when Bowie Kuhn was the commissioner, he was talking about retraction. 
he was talking about making the league smaller. You know, when I played, there were only 16 teams, and now there are 30 teams. But they were talking for a long time that there were several clubs, uh, I think Oakland being one of them, and the Rays to just contract right. and go back to 28 teams. Rock, there, there is a dichotomy here of sorts, because as we, we have reported, the Rays are dead last in terms of attendance in Major League Baseball. But from my understanding, the television ratings are just terrific. Boy, you hit that one on the head. Get, now, the Rays have always done good on radio and on TV. Fans just don't want to go. It's a societal thing. It's hard to get off your couch. You got HD. You got all the comforts. We're a little bit lazy down here. But I will tell you this. The Tampa Bay Lightning, they sell out every night. Their owner lives here. He gives back to the community. The fans love that. The TV ratings for the World Series on Sunday night beat Sunday night NFL by 36%. That never happens. Do you know the Hall of Fame game, which is really nothing in, in a preseason game, or the Pro Bowl, which is like flag football? That used to beat the World Series. Not anymore. I don't know if it's the protest, the anthem, thing like that. You got young uh, youth, some young stars in Major League Baseball right now. There's been a little bit of an insurgence. So TV ratings are good. But we still got to find ways for fans to come out to the ballpark to so see the race. What is it about our area? Is it that you know people around here feel it's just as easy and and good to to watch it on television or listen to it on the radio? Is it the lack of uh, corporate sponsorship? Is it the fact that the the team's ownership is not from around here? They're from the New York area. Well, yeah, you know, there's a combination of things. I think you know, um, Florida is really geared to football. Yeah, and uh, I think baseball being that they have 162 games that are played, you know, people get a little tapped out. You know, the, the, the money for, uh, for food at the ballpark is expensive. You know, the Rays have tried to do everything they possibly could to get more people in there. You know, if you had four people in a car, you would have to pay for parking. You know, you could bring in a bottle of water as long as it was, was not uh, broken, the seal was not broken. You could bring in a sandwich. They tried all kinds of things to get more people to the ballpark. It just seems that there was just an apathy, even in the even in the year they went to the the World Series. Um, it, it's kind of sad. So, yeah. Senator, what do we do in terms of a, from a pol public policy point of view? Obviously, the, the the Rays do have their fans. We love to watch them on t TV, and we love to listen to them on the radio. Uh, there is something, if you're a baseball fan, that you have pride that you have a team in right. your area. Do we just, you know, obviously Major League Baseball has said there will come a, a point that if the Rays don't get the stadium, uh, they're going to have to take some kind of action. Yeah, I think it's a lot of different factors. I mean, for us in Sarasota, you know, it's a 45-minute to an hour drive to go to a game and 45-minute hour drive to come back. Sarasota is an older demographic, so they'd rather, like, like the, the gentleman said, they'd rather watch on TV than drive an hour and then drive an hour back. And so, and where the stadium's located and St. Pete, there's not this large camaraderie that you see like for the Green Bay Packers in Wisconsin or for a team that has this large fan following and maybe that's where they're located maybe by moving to Tampa because there's more people there there'll be more of that camaraderie and team spirit I, I don't know I, I mean it's it's difficult down here because a lot of people don't want to make that commute to watch a game you know, Rocco, we only have a few seconds left, but I do want to ask you this, because I have heard before that the majority of viewers on television and radio are from Hillsborough County. I know folks in Pinellas may not like that, uh, but does that kind of make the case that the stadium probably should be there? I can tell you this, that the Rays, led by owner Stu Sternberg, they've always wanted to move to Hillsborough County. When Joe Madden got the job and I brought him on my TV show, he had just gotten the job, and he said, we are going to move to Tampa. We just don't know when. I'm like, you just got that job. Really? Stu must have told you that. But nothing is a guarantee. I'm telling you, the NFL rules, right? The Buccaneers only play eight home games, and they cannot sell out. It's not even close. The Marlins build a new stadium. They've been second to last in attendance because they've been bad. So... I really don't know what the answer is. We won't know until they build a new facility. And then usually the first year, win or lose, you're going to get a lot of fans going out. After that, it's crapshoot. Okay. We have to take a quick break. We'll be back for final thoughts when we return. 
And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. So, Rock, what happens next? I, it doesn't seem that the county commission is on the same page. There's been no talk in terms of price tag. And right. Pinellas County as, and St. Peter have yet to be heard from. I got to tell you, this has been a long, drawn-out process. They now have nine months to get something done with this agreement to purchase the land right here in Hillsborough County. I'm hoping that Stu Sternberg and the Rays are willing to pitch in as much as 50% to get this done. If it doesn't happen, I'm not so sure. And it's one of those things, you won't really miss it until it's gone. So I hope the Rays chip in. And gosh, I've been covering this for so long. I'm, I got a lot of gray. Uh, it's been a long process. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rock. <laughs> Senator, what is the, the current thinking in terms of Tallahassee? I mean, you kind of laid it out there, but when, when push comes to shove, would the state try to do anything differently to keep this franchise here? I, I think the political will at the state level has kind of moved away from putting a lot of money in these type of facilities and these type of projects and relying more on the locals. Okay, Hillsborough County, you want to do it, you're going to have to put up the majority of the money. We can come at maybe $2 million a year through one of these programs, but I think there's not a lot of political will at the state level, especially if you look at our overall budget picture. For the next couple of years, if you look at our revenue estimating conferences, it looks like we're going to have a deficit. So putting extra money into something like this when we have all these other needs in the state, I don't see it happening at the state level. John, uh, you are famously quoted in, in Ball Four uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of, of your, your encouragement of players to get involved with fans and sign autographs. Uh, in your opinion, have the Rays done enough to reach out to the community to develop that kind of fan base, even in Sarasota and Manatee County? Uh, I don't, you know, it's kind of split here because the Pirates are up there. They do a lot. Um, <clears throat> the Rays do, I think, their part and maybe a little more than that. In recent years, the players have really gone out into the community and tried to reach the community and have, have that community respond to them with the kids' programs that they have and the charitable things that they're doing. I think they're, I don't think they can do much more uh, as far as the players are concerned. Would you like to see the Rays stay here? Oh, yes, I would. Absol I absolutely would. Don't we all wish that we could have the Cubs and the Cardinals and the and the Boston Red Sox fans, whether you win or lose, they still show up. Right. We, we, we need that here. All right, gentlemen, thank you. FYI, you can watch past discussions. They're on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And just a reminder, if you want to stay up to date on the latest local breaking news and see alerts on your iPhone, just uh, you will need to download our new news app. Just go to the App Store and search for WWSB or My Suncoast Android users. No problem. You'll get the new version automatically. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. John O'Donohue paid for the Montreal Expo. Greg, uh, Senator, uh, State Senator Greg Stubbe and Rock Riley of Sports Talk Florida.